Hi Grade 12s, we are going to be working through Question 7 from the November 2018 Department of Education paper and it is a question on acids and bases. I will not be keeping the questions up all the time, so it would be great if you could go to EC exams and print out this question for yourself and follow along as we answer all the questions. 7.1 Sulfuric acid is a strong acid present in acid rain. It ionizes in two steps as follows. The two steps are given in the rectangular block. 711. Define an acid in terms of the Lowry Bronsted theory. According to the Lowry Bronsted theory, an acid is a proton donor. Please remember you need to know the Arrhenius, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but you need to know that, th that um, definition for acid and bases as well. 712. Write down the formula of the conjugate base of the hydronium ion. The answer is in blue. The, the conjugate base of the hydronium ion is the water molecule. When the hydronium ion H3O positive donates a proton, there's the proton that is donated, the water is what is remaining. So there's your acid, this is the conjugate base. Please note that this is a half reaction, it is not a complete reaction. Also take note that they asked for the formula. Should they have asked for the name, then you would have had to write down water. I'm assuming that you have the questions in front of you by now, so I'm just going to continue with the answers. In 7.1.3 they ask you to write down the formula of the substance that acts as an amphalite in the ionization of sulfuric acid. The answer is on the board, it's the hydrogen sulfate ion and I will explain why that is regarded as an amphalite. Just remember what an amphalite is, it is a substance that can act as an acid or a base. I've written down the two equations from the question paper. In the first reaction, the sulfuric acid reacts with water, it reacts as an acid, so it's a proton donor. When it donates the proton, the hydrogen sulfate ion forms. So this acid has that conjugate base. So I've called them my first pair, acid one, base one. This is the acid, there's its conjugate base because this is formed when sulfuric acid loses the hydrogen. Now where does the hydrogen go? It goes to the water molecule. The water molecule is accepting the hydrogen ion, so it's acting as a base. So if we had to draw that in. The hydrogen ion is transferred from the acid to the base. The water acts as the base, so the water then forms the hydronium ion when it takes the hydrogen ion from the sulfuric acid. So if water accepts a proton, it's a base, and that is its conjugate acid. So on each side we have an acid and a base, acid and a base, and you will always have a 1 and a 2, a 1 and a 2. Now we need to answer the question. In the second reaction, that hydrogen sulfate ion is now here. Again, it is acting as an acid. It is donating another proton. The second proton is being donated to the water molecule. So when it donates its proton to the water molecule, it now forms the sulfate ion. The water molecule is accepting the proton, so again it's acting as a base because it's a proton acceptor and it forms a hydronium ion. So this acid, the hydrogen sulfate ion, is forming that base. So they are pair one. Acid, conjugate base. The water is the base because it's accepting a proton, the its conjugate acid is. So this is my second pair. First pair, second pair. The question is, Write down the formula of the substance that acts as an amphalite in the ionization of sulfuric acid. This is the answer. The black is just the explanation. It is the hydrogen sulfate ion is the answer. It is an amphalite because in the first reaction it is a base and in the second reaction it is an acid. Therefore it is an amphalite. 7.2 Acid rain does not cause damage to lakes that have rocks containing limestone, which is calcium carbonate. Hydrolysis of calcium carbonate results in the formation of ions, which neutralize the acid. 7.2.1 Define hydrolysis of a salt. Hydrolysis is the reaction of a salt with water. 
That is the definition of hydrolysis. They love to ask this. Please make sure that you know it. 7.2.2 Explain with the aid of relevant hydrolysis reaction how limestone can neutralize the acid. So calcium carbonate undergoes dissociation when it is added to water. I would just like to add that it hardly dissociates. It's quite insoluble. The two ions that form are calcium ions and carbonate ions. Now here's a tip. Ions of groups 1, 2 and 7 do not undergo hydrolysis. I'm not going to go into the reason why, but just learn that, remember that. So if the calcium ion, which is in group 2, does not undergo hydrolysis, the carbonate ion undergoes hydrolysis according to this blue reaction. The carbonate ion reacts with water to form the hydrogen carbonate ion and the hydroxide ion. Remember these are very strongly basic. So the hydroxide ions are going to neutralize the acid which is um, dissolving in the water. So the carbonate reacts with the water. The water donates a proton to form the hydrogen carbonate ion and when the water has donated a proton we are always left with a hydroxide ion. So the strong base ion and that neutralizes the acid. Hydroxide ions are extremely basic. They are very strong bases and they neutralize the acid. Question 7.3. The water in a certain lake has a pH of 5, 7.3.1. Calculate the concentration of the hydronium ions in the water. In this question they gave you the pH and they want the concentration of the hydronium ions. Always give the equation from the data sheet and then do your substitution. So this is the answer. If you write all of this down, you will get three out of three. I've given you the order of the buttons that you need to press in black. You press shift, log, negative five equals. Then you will get the fraction version of the answer. We do not use fractions in physics and chemistry. You must always give the, def the decimal answer or the scientific notation so you have to press the uh, this final button SD button to get the answer as it appears over here. 7.3.2 The volume of water in the lake is 4 times 10 to the 9 decimeters cubed. Lime which is calcium oxide is added to the water to neutralize the acid according to the following reaction. I've written the reaction down here. 7.3.2 If the final amount of hydronium ions is 1,26 times 10 to the 3 moles, calculate the mass of lime that was added to the lake. So first of all, in 7.3.1, we have the concentration of hydronium ions in the lake. We worked that out with using the pH of 5. So this is the initial concentration of hydronium ions, 1 times 10 to the 5 mole per decimeter cube. With that, we can calculate the initial number of moles of our hydronium ions. The value they gave us is the final number of moles. They tell you, 732, the final amount of hydronium ions. So I've said in subscript F, final amount of moles is 1,26 times 10 to the 3. So here I calculated the initial number of moles of hydronium ions. So when I subtract the final from the initial, I will find out how many moles of hydronium reacted. Then we use the mole ratio, 2 to 1 or 1 to 2, to find the number of moles of calcium oxide that reacted. So the initial number of moles of hydronium is your concentration, which we've calculated, multiplied by the volume. So we get 4 times 10 to the 4 moles of initial moles of the hydronium ions. So the number of hydronium ions that reacted is the initial amount minus this final amount. So that is the number of moles of hydronium that reacted. So with that we can calculate the number of moles of calcium oxide that reacted by making use of the ratio. So the ratio always comes from your balanced equation. So the number of moles of calcium oxide to the number of moles of hydronium is 1 to 2, 1 to 2. 
So the number of moles of calcium oxide that reacted will be half of the number of moles of hydronium that reacted. So 38740 divided by 2, that is the number of moles of calcium oxide that reacted. When you have the formula, you always have the molar mass. So we get that from the periodic table. In this case, it's 56. So here's your equation off your data sheet. So the mass needed is number of moles times molecular mass. Multiply out, your answer is 1,08 times 10 to the 6 grams. If you look at the memorandum answer, you will see that the answer that they have is 1,09 times 10 to the 6 grams. The reason for that is they did more rounding off while they were working through the answers. Something else that I would like to point out in this example is that the volume of the water was given in decimeters cubed and we kept it in decimeters cubed because whenever you have an equation with C, which is concentration. Concentration is in moles per decimeter cubed, as we've written it there. So your volume must always be in decimeters cubed when you have concentration in your equation.